there's a doctor who is gonna be losing their job apparently as a result of just trying to advocate for kids to get vaccinated while you have the media and politicians spreading misinformation and encouraging kids and adults to see this through a partisan lens. This is Dr. Michelle Fiscus, who's caught up in a controversy after she passed along legal guidance to health providers saying teenagers do not need parents consent to receive a COVID-19 vaccine shot, a position established by decades of state law. So we're gonna have a statement from the doctor in just a minute, but I wanna be very clear. The issue there that the controversy is not that Dr. Fiscus provided unsound advice or legally questionable advice. It's just that the position, which is consistent with state law, is again inconvenient for them and they would prefer that she not do it. So she says, specifically, it was my job to provide evidence based education and vaccine access so that Tennesseans could protect themselves against COVID-19. I have now been terminated for doing exactly that. And imagine losing your job for doing something that's legally sound and is what is necessary to make sure that people protect their health in an environment which is encouraging them not to do that. Like the, the whole doctor thing is supposed to be first do no harm. So she goes out there and tries to protect people from harm and loses her job as a result of it. Hopefully we'll we'll get some other position, but as of right now has lost it. So there's a lot of other details that in theory we could we could go into the, the legal history that's being cited here. It is apparently consistent with a 1987 Tennessee Supreme Court ruling and rulings by the General Counsel of Tennessee's Department of Health. But but anyway, you, you can look at those details if you want. But what she is doing, she has effectively been canceled. Like she lost her job for saying something that is true and accurate. And I'm expecting that you're not gonna be turning on Fox News and finding a great uproar about someone being canceled for, for providing accurate advice right now. Um, but this isn't, a j- okay, I will go to that, thank you. So uh, a Republican state representative uh, critical of uh, this sort of pro-vaccination effort that we've been talking about here says, when you have advertisements like this with a young girl with a patch on her arm all smiling, We all know how impressionable our young people are and wanting to fit in in life. Just so stupid when you think about it. So this really ties together both stories. So they try to make it about the kids because they feel like they know that parents are very defensive about their kids. And they know that the anti-vax thing historically has really been centered around kids. So it's difficult to convince parents to die needlessly of a virus. But if you can get them worked up about their kids, then maybe you've got something. So that's the strategy that they're going with. It's also their strategy against the trans community recently too. But think about that, the idea that kids are like desperate to take medicine to fit in. I don't I don't think that's the thing that kids are like freaking out about. I don't think that's the big trend. It's important medically for them. But I don't think that this representative knows what he's talking about. And as of right now, I know we're running out of time, unfortunately. So Fiscus, Dr. Michelle Fiscus has lost her position. Apparently, according to a review published by Kaiser Health News and the AP, found that at least 181 state and local public health leaders in 38 different states had resigned, retired, or been fired since just April 1st, 2020, when the pandemic was heating up. There has been a politicization of this entire thing. Um, thankfully, with with uh, you know Trump being replaced by Biden nationally, it might be a little bit more rare. But at the state level, when you have wackos like that Republican state representative we're talking about, you can expect to see even more of this. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.